Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorial, I taught you about these different viruses and I told you that polymorphic virus was the most dangerous of all of them because if you have sufficient knowledge about writing a virus, then you can go ahead and do something like create one virus and program it in such a way that it creates a Trojan horse and that Trojan horse uh, again creates, like it infects the computer and it creates a virus and that again the new virus goes through and changes the binary code, it creates a macro virus so you can create one single virus that creates multiple viruses with different binary codes and it also goes ahead and uh, changes uh, the binary pattern of each and every other virus and it has multiple viruses to work in every other way. So you can go ahead and uh, you have the polymorphic virus, you can work in a stealth way, you have the microvirus the boot sector virus and you, in, in short you have everything that you need. So it might be way more than dangerous but it, but a normal person won't be able to write that because it will have much more complication but again still if there are a group of people like two or three different people they may go ahead and spend up uh, time together and write this down. So these are different types of viruses that I have taught you till now. Now let's take a look at uh, the most uh, dangerous virus of all time and before I proceed uh, these are the few signs that your computer is infected. If your computer functions slower than normal, if it slow, uh, if it responds very slowly and freezes, restarts automatically, or see uncommon messages that you don't know about, and dialog boxes, and some of the applications don't work uh, at all. Uh, these are a few examples. There are other examples which also infects only your browser such as you may see some options in the top right corner over here stating that the browser settings have been changed most of the time it does if you have Windows 7 or any newer version and um, other uh, options such as every time you go ahead and open your Chrome or your Mozilla multiple different search engines open up such as Speedbit or uh, Traverse or something like that which you have not even kept as your default search engine. So when you see such things, it means that you have been affected by your computer virus. And uh, when you, if you want to go ahead and save your computer at that point of time, save your data, the most stupidest thing that the people do is that they go ahead and take a, by, a backup of all their data inside a pen drive and they, then they go ahead and normally format it. But you don't go ahead and uh, see the most logical reason behind that because when you go ahead and take a backup, you're also taking a backup of the virus, not just your data. Your data has already been uh, affected by the virus. When you go ahead and take a backup, uh, the uh, virus is already affected uh, to your PC. Now it also affects your portable hard disk or your pen drive wherever you take the backup. And then after formatting, your computer is uh, once again normal. You go ahead and insert that pen drive, then again your computer is affected. So that is the most retardous way that one can go ahead and take a backup of all time. So the, you might be wondering that what to do in such case. You can either go ahead and uh, format the whole PC without taking your backup. That would be one way. Or go ahead and download any antivirus so that you can scan your computer. But downloading uh, another antivirus and then scanning your computer may be hard uh, again because there are some viruses which does not allow at all. Once they have infected, they does not allow at all to go ahead and download any antivirus or uh, install any antivirus from the outside. They will not even allow the antivirus to work at all. They will uh, automatically distort it and it won't even work. So what to do at this point of time? The best way, if you ask me, would be to go ahead and use a live USB CD uh, or a live uh, USB or a live CD of a Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution or even a Unix would be fine. Just go ahead. Insert that on one of your USB drives or your CD ROM and then go ahead and take a backup of all and each and everything. Remove that pen drive, go ahead and format your PC and now don't go ahead and copy all of these things again to your computer because the pen drive that you have also has the virus. So this point of time go ahead insert the live disk, insert a live disk or live USB, insert another pen drive. And take a look at all of these things and each and everything inside that or, or what are all the things you want. Each and every folder you need to go ahead and check and don't copy the folder at any point of time. Create a new folder in the new computer and then copy whatever you want and then only you will be safe. So these are the few things that you can go ahead and do in order to save yourself from different other types of viruses. So yeah, after that we have, I told you that I would be teaching you the most dangerous virus of all times. 
So the first half of the 70s or late 60s or early 70s you can say uh, there were rabbits, uh, yeah, you heard me right. Rabbits cloned themselves and okay, they occupied the system resources, slowing them down uh, the productivity. So, rabbits was one of the most dangerous virus of all time before the early 70s or the late 60s or whatever. So, uh, they were the most famous. They, they did not want to gather any information, they just wanted to key, make the system down. That's it. After that, in the early 70s, we had the creeper. The creeper was capable of entering a network by itself transferring a copy of itself to the system and that is quite creepy if you ask me but in the early 80s increasing number of programs written by individuals not by software companies started developing and program these programs caused minor viruses uh, like uh, called as trojan horses but they were not actually trojan horses trojan horse developed at a later point of time and these programs do not actually work like a trojan horse after that, in 1986, we had brain virus, which were created by Amjad and Basit Farooq Alvi. They were spread through floppy disk and they infected the boot records and not the computer hard drives. They only affected the boot records. And they were from Lahore, Pakistan. There were different viruses such as Lahore, Pakistani brain, brain A, UIUC virus. These viruses took over the free space on the floppy disk and HID from detection. And they disguised themselves by displaying the uninfected boot sector viruses on the disk. So these were the, the two most dangerous viruses of all time. After that, we had Lehigh viruses in 1987. It was the first memory resident uh, file infector that attacked all executable files and took control when a file was uh, opened and uh, whenever it was closed. After that, later on, we had the Jerusalem virus, which I have not yet mentioned over here. Jerusalem virus had bugs inside that, that reinfected, that were already infected. After that, we had a, a Robert Memory virus, the Trojan horse for Mac OS X, Torpig and Configur. So these were also more important, but we had other different types of viruses such as Robert Morris worm. And that made a worm that invaded ARPANET computers, disabled 6000 computers on the network by overflowing their memory banks with the copies of itself. 